<coughs> Hi, this is Chuck Good Samaritan Mission Jackson, Wyoming, with a little bit of the word here on this Monday morning. I hope you have a wonderful week planned for yourself. Now, we're in chapter 8 of the book of Mark. It says, Jesus feeds the 4,000. Now, a few chapters back, what did he do? He fed the 5,000. So you think he's going to have any problem with 4,000? Probably not. How does he do it? It's a miraculous thing here. He takes a little bit and magnifies it and multiplies it in the name of Jesus. And it just becomes enough to feed everyone and they get all stuffed up. All right, here he goes. About this time, another large crowd had gathered and the people ran out of food again. Jesus called his disciples and told them, I feel sorry for these people. They have been with me for three days and they have nothing left to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will faint away along the way. And some of them have come a long distance. His disciples replied, How are we supposed to find enough food to feed them out here in the wilderness? <laughs> Jesus asked, How much bread do you have? Seven loaves, they replied. So Jesus told all the people to sit down, and he took the seven loaves, thanked God, and broke them into pieces. He gave them into disciples who distributed the bread to the crowd. A few small fish were found too, so Jesus also blessed them and told the disciples to distribute them. They all ate as much as they wanted. Afterwards, a disciple picked up seven large basketfuls of leftover food. There were about 4,000 men in the crowd that day. Jesus sent them home after they had eaten. Immediately after this, he got into the boat with his disciples and crossed over to the region of Dalmuthana. Praise God for the reading of his word, man, his blessing and his understanding. You know, when I say things, it seems like I'm almost being disrespectful. This is the word of God that we're talking about here. And this word, is it comes from the God of the universe, and he's speaking it, and he put it on these pages, and then we read it back out and we give it to him. But the reason I was kind of flippant right there is, can you imagine, he just fed 5,000 with five fish and three, or three fish and five loaves. And these guys are saying, how are we supposed to find enough food to feed? Did they forget? I mean, all they had to do was look back at a chapter. <laughs> and they could have said, Jesus fed the 5,000. It's in Mark 6, verse 30. So why didn't they just look in the book? No, they didn't have the book. So this book was still being written right then. They, these, this is the miracles that Jesus was doing as he walked on this earth. So how do we take this into our recovery? How do we take this into a life that's been broken, that's been shattered? And how do we take something like this and put it into us so we can have our life put back together again? <clears throat> if Jesus can feed 4,000 probably with men and women and children, probably almost double that, maybe even more. So there's 8,000 people being fed with just a few loaves and a few fish. If he can do that, Maybe he can take your shattered, broken life and fix it, make it whole, patch it up again. Heal your problems, heal your ailments, heal the things that are hurting you. Restore relationships that you think are just completely lost and there's no hope for. You know, if he can do this to feed the people physical food, how much more do you think he's able to do with the spiritual food that you needed? The manna from heaven that's going to complete you, that make, that'll make you whole. We take this word and we reverence it. We lift it up. We are encouraged by it. And we know it's the very word of God. And as we read it into us, we become more and more and more like the one who wrote it. We don't become gods, but we become more and more like him. We're able to ward off our sin. We're able to live a holy and acceptable life unto him. Does it work every time? Sometimes I sin. If I say I'm without sin, I make God out to be a liar. But you know, it gets less and less as I seek him more and more. And it'll happen. The same thing will happen to you. So seek God with all of your heart and you'll be set free from your sin nature. And you'll be all ready to go when he comes back for you. You'll have your clothes on ready to go to heaven. Your robe of righteousness. You know whose righteousness you're wearing? The righteousness was bought at that cross. So look up to that cross and see Jesus. And give your life to him and you'll be free. This has been Chuck with a little bit of the word on his Monday morning. Have a great week. Bye-bye.